Wrote this song while crew and Aaron on a hundred mile foot race through the trails in the rain and mud. How about that? Today's episode is just going to be you and me. Um, I'd like to kind of create a audio journal of uh, what I did on February 20th of 2021. It was uh, a 50 mile effort. Um, let me let me set things up in case you haven't listened to an episode, or uh, if you have and missed a few, I'm going to kind of try to fill in some spaces here. So. Um, as with everything, <laughs> as uh, as things have been going, events have happened and not happened and changed and travel has made things more challenging uh, for sure. So um, this year I was uh, hoping to run the Cocodona 250 miler um, in Arizona in May, but um, due to my own comfort level and lack of vaccine, I just didn't feel like traveling and, and putting all of that on my family. So, um, decided to, to, uh, uh, take a different avenue, uh, when an opportunity presented itself or, uh, that's more to say, I kind of helped create an opportunity for myself in running the, um, Umstead 100 miler in Raleigh, North Carolina on March 27th. Um, I saw that they had, um, some spots, uh, for those people that, uh, potentially could run under 17 hours. Um, so, um, I, uh, I wrote an email to, uh, the RD Rhonda and, and asked about potentially gaining a spot. And she said that they were still sorting through, um, you know, whether they had spots available from, uh, people, you know, deferring and, uh, um, and accepting spots and that she would, you know, get back to me as, as fast as she could get through all that stuff, which amazingly only took about a weekend. <laughs> I think I emailed her on a Thursday or Friday and I had an email back Monday morning, um, asking me to, uh, to join, um, which was uh, extremely, extremely, um, you know, very, very nice of her. And I, I certainly appreciate that, uh, uh, being afforded this opportunity. Um, 
you know, I, I talked about it on a previous episode, but if you, if you haven't listened before, um, Umstead was the first time I ever experienced a 100-mile uh, or ultra event um, as I uh, trained at NC State, you know, for cross-country and track. Um, we would go to Umstead for a lot of our training, and, you know, every year in March, end of March, beginning of April, we'd see, you know, these signs out and people kind of, you know, moving through the, the forest with race numbers on and we'd always ask what's going on and they'd say oh we're running 100 miles or oh we're running 50 miles there's two events usually at the uh, at the event but this year they're just doing the 100 due to uh, um, restrictions but um, so uh, after college I was training for the Boston Marathon uh, I think it was 2002 and um, I was out doing a training run and you know saw one of the uh, race officials and asked if they need any help. And they said, yeah, they actually needed, uh, um, some volunteer pacers. So, uh, found my way over to the, uh, um, the start finish area and told them there, I was there to kind of volunteer to, <clears throat> to pace if anybody needed it. Um, you know, I've, I've kind of shared the, the stories of the people that I paced there. Uh, if you want to listen to previous episodes, uh, there's some amazing stories from those people, but, um, but yeah, so it was an amazing experience and my first, you know, involvement or, uh, you know, kind of eye-opening experience uh, of an ultra marathon. So um, it's kind of neat to be able to to go back to kind of to the the roots of where I first experienced something, um, where I've done more miles than, I, you know, I could shake a stick at. It's amazing to think about how much we trained in Umstead and how much it's changed. But, um, I'm really happy to be able to be, to be able to go back and line up there. So, um, with that said, um, you know, I, I tried to put some things in motion to, uh, to try to help me, um, you know, do my best at Umstead. Um, I went on all trails and was, uh, trying to determine a really suitable, training location that I could replicate what I was going to do um, at Umstead. Um, Umstead is comprised of eight laps. They're 12 and a half mile laps. Um, and uh, they've got about a thousand feet of gain per lap. So obviously here in Western North Carolina, <laughs> um, we, we have uh, plenty of opportunity for vertical gain. Um, but, um, you know, finding something of of that nature that, you know, that's suitable. Um, and, um, pretty much, you know, like trying to find, uh, basically for service road, you know, gravel road, because, um, Umstead is, uh, is typically, uh, like a crushed cinder, crushed stone. It's, you know, a really fine, uh, stone pathway is very smooth. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's come a long way since I've been there. That's what I keep saying. But, um, so anyhow, um, I, I did, you know, I, I went over into uh, one of our parks uh, on all trails. Um, it's Bent Creek. Uh, it's kind of um, known for uh, the kind of arboretum where uh, our shut-in race uh, starts. So um, Bent Creek, I was, you know, kind of guesstimating um, about one of the, the roads um, that goes through um the uh, the northern part of the park and uh so i traced the trail um umstead's a lollipop but uh i just did kind of an out and back and uh you know sure enough it was uh you know a, a good 12 and a half miles with a little bit more it was about 1150 feet of vertical gain so a little bit more vertical gain than than umstead but obviously very comparable so um you know there was my course so um, did a few training runs on it, just kind of feel it out, um, see how it, how it went and how I felt, um, you know, running out there. Um, everything was good. Um, you know, good, uh, good rolling hills with, you know, a, a steeper, um, kind of longer grind on the back end. Um, Umstead's hills are, are, you know, kind of a little bit more up down than, uh, than the hills I, I did, but, you know, obviously, um, I, it would suit my purposes. So I planned, uh, um, a 50 mile race. Now, a few weeks back, I had tried to race the, uh, South mountains 50 K and, uh, had a calf issue. Um, calf issue has pretty much resolved itself. I still have kind of a nerve that has, uh, tends to flare up and that's, what's been, uh, 
primarily the problem is just this nerve uh, causing some problems and uh, you know it was still kind of there i knew you know but it, it seemed as i as i wore on in my training um as i went on you know my runs it, it it loosened up it felt good and i was able to run so i said well i'm just gonna you know do what i can so you know, i started setting up this this 50 mile effort uh the week prior uh to the 50 miler i got a 100 mile weekend um, that kind of snuck up on me. <laughs> um, didn't, uh, didn't quite plan on doing a hundred miles, but there it was. So I had a hundred miles and, you know, I, I'm kind of in the peak mileage for, uh, for training right now anyway. So, uh, I figured I'd throw another hundred mile week in with the, uh, you know, the 50 miler. It's, it's easy enough to get a hundred miles in when you have a 50 miler on the schedule. So, um, I got 50 miles, uh, prior to the, the 50 mile run. Um, recruited some friends, uh, from some folks from the area to come out and run with me. Um, initially I had, uh, planned on starting, uh, at 7am so that I wouldn't need a headlamp and everybody wouldn't need to get there too early. And, uh, you know, I was trying to be, uh, you know, a little bit more humane, <laughs> but, um, uh, my daughter and I were supposed to do a da- uh, daddy daughter dash, a one mile fun run, uh, the, the previous Saturday and, uh, whether, uh, did not permit that to happen. So they moved it back to the 20th, uh, same day, obviously as my 50 miler. So, uh, that start time was 1245. So, um, I was planning on running, uh, seven hours and 30 minutes, which is nine minute pace, which was my, it's my goal pace for Umstead. And, um, <laughs> so, uh, I figured I would start at 4 a.m. <laughs> and get it done by 1130. Uh, hop in my car, get over to the park, and run with my daughter. Um, and so um, I, uh, I, you know, I, I changed the start time, let everybody know what was going on. Um, you know, I had a nice easy run on Friday. You know, things were, were looking good. I was feeling fine. Um, you know, everything looked good training wise. Heart rate was looking good. And, um, I, uh, I, I made some, uh, pumpkin, uh, spice chocolate chip muffins gluten-free with my daughter on Thursday. And, uh, I used the, uh, the scratch labs book, the portables book, if you're familiar, um, I'll, I'll put that in the, uh, the show notes, but, um, they have a recipe for, uh, rice balls. And so I made a, uh, sweet potato cumin and bacon, uh, rice balls with sticky rice. Uh, so we put those together on Thursday and, um, Friday, uh, you know, I, aside from uh, all of the kids activities and stuff, uh, you know, I prepped everything for, for Saturday. Um, I was using, a, a ultra aspire, uh, synaptic belt. It has, uh, one, one of their, um, soft flasks, um, uh, well, you know, whatever that you want to call their, their flasks, uh, had one of those and, and a nice pocket to store gels. Um, and, uh, you know, I was carrying, it's a 12 and a half mile lap. So I was carrying three to four gels with me. Um, I had some goo roctane, uh, and, uh, three types of spring. Um, I used the, the Canterbury, the, uh, the new, um, awesome sauce and, uh, the, uh, speed nut. So, um, plenty of calories just, you know, in gels, but, uh, you know, I wanted some, some other things. Um, I had some, uh, Cape Cod, uh, salt and vinegar chips in bags that I could grab if I, I felt like something salty, um, but, uh, primarily I'd be carrying the, uh, gels with me. So, um, so anyway, um, and, uh, I, I was listening to, uh, you know, the, the actual, the podcast that, uh, I recorded with, uh, the two gentlemen, um, that finished the, uh, fierce dragon. And, uh, you know, I thought about what, uh, uh, what David had said about, uh, carrying Gatorade and, uh, I was like, well, you know, well, why not? So I, I tried just doing Gatorade, uh, rather than my, my typical tailwind. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll kind of talk about how things went as it went. So, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, but, uh, that was my basic gear. Um, it was, uh, um, 25 degrees at the start. Um, I got a new pair of, uh, actually I, I, I'm kind of going between, uh, the exoskin compression socks and the, uh, the CEP, um, run threes, uh, as, as compression, kind of the, uh, you know, below the knee compression socks. So, um, I, uh, I have so much experience with the CEP. I chose that for the day just to kind of see how they went. Um, and, uh, I've been using the two times you, uh, 
um, run shorts. Um, so I used the two times U shorts, and then I had a, a Run Rabbit, uh, their new Cool Max and Merino wool base layer, and the uh, Patagonia, uh, one of their um, um, uh, what are they? Uh, the Capeline um, All Day. Uh, warm, I think it is. Uh, I'd have to look, but uh, anyway, one of their long sleeve technical tees uh, and a nice little uh, cap from uh, Mount Hardware and um, my Mizuno Breath Therm gloves, which um, you know I, I typically love. Uh, and then I was trying the uh, the Atreyu, um, the, uh, the their uh, their run model, which I've, I've talked about in the past. Uh, I, I thought that was going to be the model I would use um, going into to Umstead. Uh, and again, you know, I'll, I'll talk about how the equipment worked out. So, um, but you know, that's that's my basic equipment for the run. Um, I did have my Pex, Petzl Actic Core um, at the start. Uh, that was uh, you know what I used in the dark uh, for the four a.m. start. Um, and uh, I had a uh, um, a uh, Columbia uh, jacket, uh, just a nice little packable that I stuffed in my pocket. Um, I was wearing the uh, um, uh, Rabbit Be Free shorts as well on top of the uh, uh, Two Times U compression shorts because uh, they had uh, side pockets. So I threw my jacket in the side pocket and I was able to zip that up. Um, and uh, uh, that you know it was a good setup. It was you know pretty minimal. Didn't have to worry about much. Um, you know, my, uh, the, the pouch for my food was in the front a bottle was easily accessible from the back. So pretty easy setup. Um, you know, didn't have a pack or anything that had to carry too much stuff. So that was nice. I was using my car as my aid station. So, you know, I'd be back to the car each lap. Um, and there was a bathroom right there just in case. Uh, so it was, it was a pretty perfect setup at the trailhead for, for a little aid station. You know, I just had to pop my trunk and grab my stuff and keep moving. Um, so, um, yeah, I got up about 3 a.m., uh, had the coffee already percolating and, uh, you know, I, I grabbed that, uh, I was a little cautious with the coffee just because, uh, at South mountains, it seemed to really kind of disturb. I, I, I haven't quite figured out when, uh, when brewing coffee, I usually use a, a reusable K cup. Um, but you know, when I brew a, uh, um, a large pot of coffee, I, I haven't quite figured out how many scoops to put in yet. And, and I tend to make some cowboy coffee, which isn't great before, uh, uh, before a, a long run with a, you know, a sensitive stomach. So uh, I was really, really just sipping on it. I didn't have much coffee. Uh, I didn't really need much, um, even though I, I really didn't sleep too well. I got to bed pretty early uh, on Friday night, um, around 9 p.m. I, 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 you know, tried to close my eyes, but uh, it was a fitful sleep. I think I was really excited uh, about the day. Uh, not very amp- apprehensive, actually. Um, I was looking forward to it. Uh, that's for sure. I definitely had a positive mindset going into it, and especially since I knew I had friends with me that were going to be joining me for each lap. Uh, it just kind of looked like it was going to be a long run, you know, a good time with friends in the woods. So uh, I look forward to that part. I think I was more apprehensive about the fact that I needed it to be done by 11:30 to get to my daughter. I really, really just did not want to let her down uh, and 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 not uh, finish in time. So uh, I think. Uh, that was my biggest apprehension uh, and fear, but um, it didn't. Uh, you know, it didn't really bother me once I started. Um, and I'll talk about like how it played out again. You know, as as I get going here. But um, you know, I woke up and I was I was pretty wide awake and, and good to go. Got myself on the road and got to the trailhead in plenty of time to kind of make sure I had everything I needed for the first lap and everything was set up for when I got back, so I could just find things easily. Um, so. Um, you know, it, it was, it worked out well. The guys all got there in plenty of time. We actually had a, I think we started like just like a minute or two right before four. So it was, it was perfect. Uh, you know, we had a good start. Uh, my friend, uh, Joe Quinlan and, uh, Craig Peterson and, uh, Eric Martinez and, oh, no, Eric's on lap two, excuse me. Um, and, um, uh, oh, Nathan Fronts, that's who it was. Uh, we're all on lap one. So I had three guys with me, um, on lap one and, uh, you know, we uh, we started out. Uh, it was in the dark, obviously. 4 a.m. start. We're in the dark, and nobody else is there. Obviously, nice and quiet, and you know, we're joking around and having a good time. And 
it was cold. I mean, you know, I could feel it on my hands. Uh, it was a little bit cold. You know, 25 degrees was a little bit frigid. I know a lot of the country faces colder temperatures than that. Uh, so not complaining by any stretch of the imagination. Um, the ground was good. Um, we had had some rain, but um, really no ice on the uh, the dirt roads. Uh, again, this was all on gravel roads. The gravel roads were all in really pretty good condition. Um, so no real ice or anything like that. Um, you know, first mile went by and, you know, we started out like about 10 minute pace, which was totally fine. It's good little, you know, kind of inclined to start, which I didn't bother me at all to start slow. I told them all I'd rather start slow than fast. So, uh, you know, again, my, my goal pace was, <clears throat> was nine minutes per mile. So totally fine. We, you know, we started warming up into it and gradually the pace is kind of, uh, crept down, uh, actually into the, the eight minute range and, you know, kept having to pull back a little bit, but you know, it's, it's tough when the course undulates like that, you know, you've got your uphill and your downhill and obviously the pace, you know, kind of increases on your downhills. So, um, kept popping in the eights, which, you know, we weren't too far under, uh, nine minutes. So uh, it was, it was fine. You know, things felt good. I was trying to be conservative and, you know, be mindful of my watch and, and, you know, take in some calories. Um, uh, you know, um, it's, it's kind of interesting. And, and here's where I, I, you know, want to talk a little bit about the, the Gatorade versus the tailwind, because, um, I think when I have tailwind, I'm a little bit more mindful because I'm thinking I'm pulling calories from it as well. Um, and so with the Gatorade, I didn't drink as much, so I wasn't pulling in as many calories as I was used to, um, which, you know, uh, in retrospect, um, was, was not a good thing. And, uh, it did affect me later on, which again, I'll get to, um, but, um, you know, kind of going forward, uh, I think I'll kind of go back to the, the tailwind just because, uh, um, I, like I said, I'm a little bit more mindful of drinking and, and getting in some more calories, which, you know, it's apparently I, I did need, <laughs> it did affect me later on. So, um, but that said, um, you know, lap one was going by, uh, we, uh, we, uh, made our way to the turnaround, you know, things, gels were going down, stomach felt fine. Uh, you know, I felt the calf a little bit on the downhills. That's kind of where I felt it on South mountains, but nothing like on South mountains on South mountains. Uh, the race, I actually felt like my calf was actually pulling, like feel tugs within the muscle. Uh, this, I could tell it was the nerve just kind of like letting me know it was aggravated. Uh, but, um, it, you know, it wasn't anything like South Mountains and it wasn't anything alarming where I was like, oh, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this one. South Mountains, I was already, you know, early in the run, I was already thinking I'm not going to make it through this one, uh, just based on how the calf was pulling. But this one, I didn't have any of, any of those, um, alarms going off or anything. I felt relaxed and, and happy and calm and it's good to be in, you know, the company I had, um, you know, and then, um, we, uh, we got to the turnaround and, uh, started making our way back. And, um, on the back, if, if you look at Strava, you can kind of see how the course goes. Um, there's, a, um, you know, there's like a little bit of downhill on the way back and then it gets like to, a probably the longest climb. It's about a mile or so. Um, and so, um, you know, coming back up that, um, t the two of the guys fell off a little bit and we were moving a little bit fast. Uh, you know, I told Nathan, we're probably, probably going a little bit hard here. Let's pull back a little bit. So, you know, we tried to ease back, but it's just, you know, legs were in a groove. They were just locked into a, a you know, a smooth pace, which, you know, it was, uh, it was definitely under what, what I wanted it to be. Um, but it wasn't, again, it wasn't alarming. I wasn't, uh, afraid that we were going too hard. Um, as it wasn't too much faster than, than goal pace. Um, you know, but I was definitely, I was, uh, you know, I was watching it. <laughs> we'll say I was definitely watching and making sure that, you know, that my heart rate was staying low. You know, I was wearing a chest strap. So I was kind of watching the heart rate and make sure it stayed kind of zone, uh, zone two, um, which, you know, no problems, even on the Hills, I was, I was kind of staying zone two, you know, I was feeling good. Uh, again, food was going down good. Uh, we started making our way back and, uh, you know, we got through that, that climb, things were feeling fine. Um, you know, we were still in the dark, obviously. Um, and we got back, uh, to, uh, to the parking area, uh, decided to, uh, to <laughs> relieve myself, um, you know, and, uh, and, and then, hop over to the car, um, dump my trash and, uh, picked up a fresh round of gels. Um, I grabbed a, a fresh bottle. I hadn't drinking much out of the first one, but I just grabbed a fresh bottle just to, 
just to have it. And then, um, you know, realizing that I hadn't really drank much, I decided I better do a better job on this next lap. Uh, and I grabbed a, a muffin. I was like, ah, might as well have, you know, a little bit of calories. Um, you know, it takes about an hour 50 per lap, um, at that pace. So, um, I picked up my next crew. Nathan decided to do another lap. And then, uh, my friend, uh, Greg Little and uh, Eric Martinez, who was uh, recently on the podcast, he was the winner of the South Mountains 50K. Um, he hopped in, um, and um, you know, lights still on, um, pack refreshed, uh, quick turnaround. You know, it only took me a few minutes there uh, to uh, to go to the bathroom and and grab my new things. I didn't stop the watch, uh, kept the watch running, and uh, and then we headed back out. Uh, said goodbye to those guys, thanked them for everything, and got going on lap two. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> nice to have, uh, uh, some, some new people, you know, uh, some, some fresh conversations. And, uh, of course, you know, Nathan was, was great in, uh, in contributing <laughs> to, uh, to our conversations and such. We kept, uh, it, it lively and spirited, which was awesome. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing, uh, what, uh, what great company can do, uh, you know, so I, I really appreciate those guys, uh, you know, just coming out that early, you know, uh, it's, uh, it was before, before 6 AM still. And, uh, here they are out, you know, Eric traveling, uh, over an hour and a half to get there. And I really, you know, can't thank those guys enough for, for joining me for it. Um, everything was fine. Uh, you know, no change of gear or anything. Um, lap two, like I said, just swapped out the bottle, grabbed some new gels, uh, had my muffin, muffin went down just fine. Uh, chased it with some, some Gatorade and, uh, and kept going. Um, you know, like we kept moving really well, um, got to the turnaround, um, and we were able to kind of turn off our, our headlamps. Um, and for the first time, my fingers started to feel normal. <laughs> they had kind of been cold, you know, that, that feeling that you have when, uh, uh, they're not quite, um, um, agile enough because of the cold, they feel kind of, uh, uh, frozen <laughs> is the best word. <laughs> uh, logically, they feel frozen. They don't move well. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I, they were feeling good on the return trip. I actually felt like, you know, they, like they're almost back to normal. Um, and, uh, um, yeah, we, you know, we just kept moving and, um, Greg was taking some pictures. Uh, we saw his girlfriend and, and, uh, you know, our friend, mutual friend and, uh, and uh, another previous podcast guest, uh, Abby Harris, they, they were out running and they said, Hey, it's just, it's good to see some folks, you know, uh, we, you know, we really hadn't seen anybody to that point. So it was nice to, to see some other folks. And then, uh, you know, as we started making our way back, we started seeing more and more runners, which was, it's always great, you know, to see other folks and, you know, it's, it's a small community. So, um, definitely recognize some faces and said hello. And, you know, uh, it, it's, it's hysterical when, uh, you know, people don't know exactly what you're doing and, and they figure it out afterwards. Cause, uh, you know, when I posted on Strava, uh, and, and on social media for the things that went on that day, everybody's like, Oh my God, I didn't realize you were doing 50 miles. Well, you know, how could you, um, it's, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was great. You know, that, that definitely brought my spirits, uh, even higher. Uh, just, I felt great, you know, I felt nice and smooth, consistent. Uh, hadn't quite reached a marathon yet, obviously, you know, even when we got back, it was like 25 miles. So, um, got back to, uh, to the car the second time again, I hit the bathroom, make sure everything was good. Dipped into the car. Um, probably should have grabbed, uh, uh, like a rice ball or two to eat. I just wasn't, just wasn't that hungry at that point, you know, but I did grab uh, fresh gels and got rid of my trash. Uh, I had been eating my, my gels on a regular 35 minute interval. Um, so, um, you know, I felt that was fine and I had the muffin, I, I kind of felt satiated, so I, I didn't want to push it. Um, but you know, again, in retrospect, um, it was probably been a good time to, to take on some extra calories. Um, and then I picked up some, uh, some new friends, <laughs> um, Tori Greaves, who again has been on the podcast. She's the, uh, the current FKT holder for Pitchell for the females, uh, Sean Bagley and, uh, Sarah Molsnisk. Uh, they all joined me, which was fantastic. Um, they, uh, they're all just, uh, such positive, uh, you know, happy individuals, especially for, uh, what are we at now? 7.30 AM. <laughs> um, it was, uh, it was awesome to, uh, to have them along. Um, you know, uh, still on pace, uh, by the way, and, you know, no, 
no real concern. I think I came, I told them, you know, meet me here at, at whatever the, you know, the time was that I expected to be in. And I think I was like 20 seconds uh, within range of what I told them. So pretty much spot on, you know, with the pacing, everything's feeling good. Um, legs were fine. Uh, no problems, anything, you know, um, uh, I just took off my headlamp and my hat. Uh, it's the only thing that I, I ditched there. Um, and, uh, you know, we headed back out. And, um, you know, we, again, you know, great conversations just kind of carrying me through. Um, you know, nothing, no problems. Um, and we were talking about how, uh, you know, when you hit that 26.2, you give it a little whoop whoop. But uh, I, uh, I totally missed that mark and you know uh tori asked me did you get your whoop and i said ah i'll hit it at 50k because i think we were like right right you know before 50k and then you know we hit 50k and i gave a big whoop and everybody whooped and you know it's kind of a a joy to to hit that mark you know and um i really hadn't really thought about the miles to that you know like it's just i hit 50k and i was like man you know just i'm good like feeling fine uh, we turned around, started heading back, and uh, going up that third hill for some reason, uh, I just got like a little bonk. Uh, you know, like I said, that nutrition had been on point, and this is why I kind of said I probably should have had some calories uh, or brought a little bit more with me for that that's that, that third lap. Um, you know, after the second lap and before the third, I should just grab some rice cakes or something and, and had a little bit more because I just had a mini bonk on that climb. And, uh, you know, I took a moment, I said, Hey guys, just give me a second here. I just need to walk and, and put down, uh, a few more calories. So I had, uh, the, um, the, uh, speed nut, which is about 250 calories. And, um, I chased that with the Canterbury. So I put down about 350 calories and, um, you know, got those down and, and, uh, and then just started running again. Uh, and that was really the only time I walked, uh, was that little mini bonk on that, that climb. Um, you know, the rest of the time I ran, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, but those calories put me right back on top, you know, thankfully I caught it just in time. Um, you know, I even, I think I even had another gel prior to finishing that lap just to make sure I was okay. Um, but, um, yeah, a little mini bonk there, but thankfully saved it. Um, and, uh, definitely, um, drank, um, a lot more, you know, that, uh, the second lap I actually, um, polished off the bottle and third lap, um, you know, polished it off as well. So I had emptied two of the bottles. Um, and, uh, and when we got back, um, you know, knowing <laughs> what I had just gone through, um, I actually, I had some, uh, tailwind rebuild with me, their, uh, their recovery drink, uh, which I was going to have afterwards, but, you know, kind of feeling what I had just gone through, I decided to, uh, to go ahead and, and drink it. But, um, you know, with, uh, with coming into the aid station and not wanting to waste much time, I was still plenty of fine. I was right on pace, you know, no problems. Um, uh, you know, I, I definitely wanted to, to be cautious, you know, it being my, my last lap, uh, just, um, you know, so I, I, I chugged the, uh, the rebuild, um, which, uh, if you've ever chugged a protein drink, uh, and then tried to run, uh, you could have disastrous results. <laughs> um, so I, I, uh, I was a little bit worried about chugging it, but, uh, you know, due to, uh, we'll say my time constraints, um, I pounded it and, uh, and then I grabbed a, uh, another, um, chocolate chip muffin and, uh, or, uh, the pumpkin spice chocolate chip and, and headed out, um, and, uh, got out the back out on the trail. Um, you know, um, <laughs> my stomach, uh, was deciding what it was going to do. <laughs> wasn't quite sure. Uh, I had, uh, my best friend, David Workman with me, um, and, uh, our, uh, um, our other friend, um, Dennis, uh, Patnot, um, which I just learned how to say Dennis's name. <laughs> so, uh, and Dennis is actually a, a supporter of the show. So thank you, Dennis, uh, for everything, for coming out and for supporting. I really sincerely appreciated that, uh, that effort out there. Um, and, um, you know, we got going and like I said, my stomach was, was deciding what it wanted to do. Uh, was it going to give me a fit or was it going to take it and, uh, and be happy with the fact that it just got, you know, um, some extra calories and some food to, uh, to satiate the, uh, you know, the, the belly and, and hopefully, uh, resist, uh, another bonk. Um, so, um, 
you know, it, it took me about uh, about two or three miles uh, to to kind of settle the stomach, and um, you know, we were we were running along, um, it, and I could tell it was difficult for those two to uh, to run. Uh, you know, eight thirty to nine minute pace. Uh, they're they're probably used to much faster, so they were you know kind of up ahead of me, um, which. Uh, it's it's tough when you're on your last lap and uh, you know you, you're kind of just uh, running and trying to to uh, to sustain your pace and and you know folks are are fresh and uh, you know um, but um, it, it made me uh, kind of hang on and keep pushing um, and uh, you know I uh, I really that that climb where I had the mini bunk uh, I was really worried about that climb for for lap four. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we did it. We got, you know, I, uh, I got up it, I ran up it. Um, it was, uh, um, it was a push, uh, I could tell my heart rate kind of climbed a little bit more on that, on that time. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I kept pushing and, uh, I was working a little bit on the way back. I'll be honest. Uh, the way back on that lap was definitely, um, the most work that I had put in, but, uh, I knew that, you know, in less than 10 kilometers, uh, I would, uh, I'd be finished. Um, and most likely, you know, um, if, if everything went accordingly, uh, I, you know, I would hit my goal. So that was, you know, quite, uh, uh, invigorating. I was definitely excited, uh, to get back. Um, you know, those guys kept talking and, um, that always helps, you know, I, I was kind of quiet on the way back. Uh, like I said, I was, I was definitely kind of feeling the, <laughs> the miles on my legs, um, and kind of pushing through my comfort. Uh, I was definitely feeling the fact that I had a hundred miles the week before and, uh, and 50 miles prior to this effort. Um, but, um, you know, I was definitely, uh, trying to remind myself that, uh, you know, I, I was about to, uh, to finish and, uh, and finish, you know, extremely well. So, um, uh, you know, worked through it. Um, <laughs> it turned to uh, very short answers from me. Um, definitely wasn't, um, I wasn't in a foul mood or negative or, you know, I, I kept thinking more about my daughter. Um, <laughs> uh, that was definitely, um, you know, my, the thoughts in my head was, uh, was of getting to her and being done and, and, uh, and, you know, and running with her. So, um, I was definitely, uh, um, uh, motivated, <laughs> you can say, um, by that, uh, uh, it made me, uh, made me really, uh, reflective and, and grateful for, uh, for the opportunity, you know, just, as I said, you know, in the dedication before this episode, um, I'm just fortunate to, to have them and, uh, you know, be afforded these opportunities. Um, uh, remember my son, um, when I'm tucking him into bed, um, you know, asking me, you know, how far are you running tomorrow? <laughs> and, uh, I said, you know, I'm running 50 miles. And he just kind of nodded his head like it's a normal thing. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's, it's funny that, uh, their perception, uh, is so different, you know, um, had, uh, <laughs> had, uh, had that conversation gone on, you know, between, uh, my parents and I, I, uh, I really would have questioned, uh, my father or my mother, uh, just cause you know, we didn't, we didn't think about those type of things. Uh, but, um, yeah, it didn't, it didn't even affect my son. So our filters are a little bit different, but, uh, you know, again, an amazing reflection, um, as to, uh, the lives we lead and, uh, what we show our kids, you know, what we can do and uh, the potentials and, and possibilities that are, uh, that are available to us. Um, if we just take the, uh, uh, the chance or the opportunity to do them, um, but anyhow, um, yeah, working back, um, you know, I, I finished off my Gatorade and definitely had, uh, had my gels again. And, uh, my watch hit 50 miles, um, just before our, uh, our finish point. Cause we had kind of gone a little bit further on the outs a few times. So, uh, um, you know, I could see the, the, the finish, um, you know, had it been, you know, spot on <laughs> 12 and a half mile laps, but we had gone a little bit further, like I said, a few times. So, um, uh, I, you know, I stopped and they looked at me and they're like, what's up? I was like, that was 50 miles. <laughs> my watch said 50 miles. Um, then, uh, they're like, Oh my God, you just finished. Um, it was a PR for me. Um, the, uh, the, uh, I guess the best, um, 50 miler I had previously was uh seven 
40 something. So uh, I, I ran 729 and change. Um, so just under 730, you know, almost perfect. Um, not stopping my watch, you know, again, uh, kept the watch running. So, um, you know, everything you see on Strava is heart rate data and, um, and, uh, you know, again, no stops from the watch. Um, auto pause was off. So, you know, it's, uh, that's all, <laughs> that's all my data, you know, seven hours and 29 minutes and change uh, for 50 miles on, uh, on a pacing effort. Um, little bit of, uh, of toughness on that last 10 K, but, you know, I mean, given the circumstances, I was extremely proud of the effort and extremely grateful for the friends that joined me, um, and made this journey so special. Um, you know, I, I really wasn't even thinking about it when we finished that that was a PR, um, I may have mentioned it, but like, it really wasn't like, I, I wasn't, you know, that wasn't my intention. I guess I can say, like, I wasn't, um, I wasn't celebrating the fact that, uh, that I had PR'd, um, I was just celebrating the fact that I had a great day out there. Um, I got to spend some time with some really good friends, um, to be in the woods and, and to move for 50 miles on my own accord. Um, that's just a blessing. Um, and you know, I had this <laughs> other opportunity that, uh, I needed to get to, um, you know, uh, Dennis, uh, needed to head out and, uh, Dave needed to finish up his run. So, um, um, you know, we, we said goodbye. Um, I kind of sat down for a moment and, uh, you know, somebody, uh, was about to go biking, looked at me and they were like, did you really just do 50 miles? <laughs> and I kind of just smiled and nodded my head. And he's like, man, and, uh, you know, it, 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 I'm not looking for any recognition. Uh, again, this is just a, a journal. Uh, I hope my kids get to listen to this someday. Uh, and just know the, uh, the joy, uh, that they bring me and that running brings me, uh, that my friends bring me. Um, you know, I really do have a great life. Uh, they make it so much better. Running makes it so much better. Um, it's uh, get a little emotional, <laughs> but uh, it truly it does mean the world um, to be able to do this kind of stuff <clears throat> and uh, to have fun in this way with uh, with folks that are so like minded. Um, my kids, you know, they. Uh, I think they get it. <laughs> and, uh, I say that because when I got to the park and, uh, I saw my daughter, she smiled and she was excited. Um, you know, to see excitement in your child's eyes when they're about to go run, <laughs> it's, uh, it truly is just an amazing feeling <laughs> to know that, um, you know, what they're about to do is going to bring them joy as well. Uh, to know that they get that feeling um, the same as I do. Uh, so maybe they can understand why their father goes out and runs uh, for 50 miles <laughs> just for the sheer happiness and joy of the experience. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I got out of my car. I still had my, uh, my sweatshirt and my puffy on because <laughs> I was cold. From after the effort, the uh, the temperature had now gotten into the 40s, and it was still sunny. So um, beautiful day, windy, um, but um, yeah, we uh, we had a mile to do. <laughs> no matter if I had just done 50 miles or not, um, it was uh, it was uh, it was fun to to see all the, you know the kids and their parents and uh, just uh, you know be around that atmosphere. Um, they had, you know, made two separate start times so that there weren't a lot of people in, in each heat. Um, but, um, you know, we, uh, we lined up, uh, we let, we let the bigger kids <laughs> get in front of us and, uh, uh you know, I, I didn't know how my legs were going to do. They were, uh, they weren't too tight or too tired, but, um, you know, God knows after 50 miles of running, um, uh, I should say the, the course, um, again, it, you know, it was just, under 5,000 feet of vertical gain for four laps. Um, but, um, you know, it, it was, um, I think if I had done it on the pavement, I probably wouldn't have been able to, to even walk. So, um, 
you know, at least I had that going for me. So we, we got ready to run and, uh, you know, we were all masked up and, and, uh, you know, she's, she's all eager and she's like, all right, you ready? And I said, I'm ready as I'm going to be. So, uh, you know, the, the guy said go and, you know, we just kind of settled in behind some of the other runners and you know, she's, uh, you can see, uh, pictures on social media. She just a little, little whip it. She's got a great little stride, uh, just, you know. It's fun to see her excitement and, and just watch the smile on her face. She was having, you know, a good time uh, and doing this together. Uh, we just kind of, it was a two-lap race, so we just kind of stayed behind some of the other folks. And then um, uh, we got through lap one, and I said, you want to you wanna move up? And she's like, yep. <laughs> so um, we took the lead, and, uh, you know, we're running out front, and, uh, you know, just kept checking over on her and, she kept looking up at me to make sure I was okay. And, um, <laughs> she, we just smiled at each other. And, you know, I say, are you okay? And she's like, yep. And she's like, are you? I was like, I'm good. <laughs> so, um, we, uh, we made our way around and, you know, my wife was out there, uh, cheering us on and taking pictures and, uh, super cute. You know, we came across the finish line and she got a, uh, carnation and a cute little medal with a, a tiara on it and a nice inscription on the back, daddy, daughter, dash 2021. Um, and, uh, a big chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> so it was, uh, it's a great experience. Um, yeah, she was, she was wonderful. Uh, I think we ran right around nine minutes. <laughs> um, funny enough to, to hit my hundred mile pace and, uh, daddy daughter dash with my daughter. Um, it was, uh, a truly, uh, you know, a great experience. I got the, uh, the metal, um, Posted up right here next to my stand-up desk. Um, it's going to mean a lot to me. I don't, I don't keep many medals out, many awards, um, but that one I think will stay. So, um, that's my story. I'm recovering well. Uh, we had a really good lunch after that. You know, I, I had some food <laughs> after I finished on my car ride over to the park. Um, I definitely scarfed down. Um, the potato chips and another uh, muffin, um, drank a ton of fluids. Uh, and then, uh, after our run, you know, we had, like I said, we had a really great lunch, um, had a veggie medley wrap and, uh, some salmon, um, and, and just kept drinking more fluids all day. got home and just took it easy for the day. Um, Sunday moved around a bit, just try to get the legs going. They, they really weren't too bad. They weren't too sore. Um, nothing hurt too bad, you know, I could tell they were a little tight, but not too bad. And then Monday I went out for a jog and things felt pretty normal, kind of getting back to, getting back to things. Um, here it is Wednesday, uh, February 24th. I just ran, uh, nine miles, uh, just hit the treadmill, uh, with, you know, my son's home for virtual school. So, uh, got to stick around. So I'm doing a lot of treadmill miles, but I mean, it, it was good. Um, I was, it was fun, all good stuff. Um, you know, and, uh, Umstead's March 27th. So just got to do what I got to do to, to get my legs ready for, for that. Um, it's, uh, it's going to be a fun race. I'm really looking forward to it. You know, whether, uh, whether I hit the time or not, I just, uh, just look forward to that opportunity to get out there and, and be out there just like every other day. Um, so I, uh, thanks for listening guys. Uh, appreciate, you know, just, uh, just, uh, your ears here. Um, if you have questions on uh, on anything I, I did to to get to that point, you know, training has been really simple for me. Um, I just really focused on uh, on gaining a, a back a, a huge aerobic base. I think that's something that uh, I totally missed for a number of years. It's just working on you know an aerobic base for an extended period of time, just you know lowering my heart rate and getting it down to where you know faster paces, my heart rate's still really low. Uh, and it just, it carried me and it showed in my recovery, you know, that I can't, I can't emphasize enough the importance of that aerobic base. And, uh, you know, so if you have questions, um, want to know about, you know, training questions on training, uh, want to learn about coaching, whatever you, you know, whatever you have, just, uh, just let me know running pains, gmail.com, um, socials and everything else. They're going to be in the show notes. Um, I, you know, as always, thank you guys for, for supporting the show. Um, thank you uh, for the Patreon supporters once again for helping out uh, and, and making this possible. 
Um, and uh, until next time, signing off for now. Run on, my friends, and stay healthy. like to dedicate this episode to my family, specifically my wife and my kids. Know that I love you more than words can express, and I want to thank you for all these opportunities, <clears throat> for letting me do these crazy adventures, and for giving me the life that I lead. I love you guys.